Welcome to gmatquestions.org. This is a tutorial for a critical reading type question on the GMAT. Let's go ahead and begin. In the 1950s, the median income of a household in the United States was the equivalent of $55,000 per year in today's monetary terms, whereas now the median income in the United States is $89,000. As a result, some economists have concluded that the equal distribution of wealth was much weaker in the 1950s than it is today. Thus, the same economists believe that current statistics reflect the strengthening of the middle class and lend credibility to free market economic policies as working towards a more equal distribution of wealth. Which of the following, if true, most weakens the claim of the passage above? Okay, so as we can see, we're being asked to provide the answer choice that would most effectively weaken the claim being made in the passage. So let's go ahead and look at the passage and determine what the claim that we're trying to weaken is. We'll start with the first sentence. In the 1950s, the median income of a household in the United States was the equivalent of 55000 per year okay, in today's monetary terms, whereas now the median income in the United States is 89000 so what we get is that the median income is up from 55000 per year to 89000 per year since the 1950s. And this is in today's monetary terms. In the second sentence, we get a situation in which a group of economists have concluded from the statistics that we get from one that the equal distribution of wealth was much weaker in the 1950s. So what we get into is the idea that the lower median income in the 1950s presents a situation in which the equal distribution of wealth was much weaker in the 1950s than it is today, right, because of the lower median income. This is what the economists are concluding, okay, from the data given. Okay, so in the third sentence, what we get is the formal claim being made by the economist. Okay, and this is based on number one and number two. So given that they believe that the equal distribution of wealth was weaker in the 1950s than it is today, they claim that that difference represents a strengthening of the middle class, and by strengthening the middle class, one lends credibility to free market policies that are ostensibly equivalent to the greater distribution of wealth. So what we get in the third sentence is a claim that's based on the conclusion being drawn from the data. And that claim is that the strengthening of the middle class is the same thing as a more equal distribution of wealth. So if we take one and three together, what we get is the following claim. Due to the rise of the median income in the U.S. since the 1950s, economists claim that the growth of the middle class is representative of a more equal distribution of wealth and the efficacy of free market economic policies. Okay, so this is a claim that we're now going to go ahead and weaken. Okay, so let's go ahead and evaluate each of the answer choices and determine which of the answer choices would most effectively weaken the claim. A. A higher contemporary average income of 89000 would reflect the increasing accumulation of wealth that has been brought into the United States from abroad. Okay, so what we get here is the idea that the higher contemporary average of 89000 would reflect an increasing accumulation of wealth, which was brought in from abroad. Okay, so what is the first thing we notice here that's wrong with this answer choice? Before we even delve into the meaning of the statement, which might perhaps be out of the scope of the passage, we see that the statement is speaking about a higher contemporary average income. And what we get in the passage is the median income. Okay, so let's so remember the median is the numerical value separating the higher half of a set of numbers from the lower half. So it's a number directly in the middle. Well, the average is the total sum of a set of data divided by the number of items that make up that set. 
Okay, so we always have to read very carefully. We have to be very attentive readers and understand the logic being drawn in each statement relative to the information given in the answer choice. Okay, so the GMAT does this a lot where they'll use words that have very specific meanings, such as average and median, and use them interchangeably. Okay, so we know that A is incorrect because it's talking about the average and not the median. So it's outside the scope of the passage. B. 55,000 was worth much more in the 1950s than it does today, reflecting at best very little change in the distribution of wealth. Okay, so this might seem like a fairly decent answer choice considering that it's trying to nullify the claim by stating that there really hasn't been any change in the distribution of wealth. Okay, but it's justifying it by claiming that 55,000 was worth much more in the 1950s, whereas the passage clearly states that 55,000 is being weighed in today's monetary terms, right? So B is clearly incorrect considering that it contradicts the information given in the passage. C. Generally speaking, most economists tend to be partisan and rarely conduct accurate statistical analysis. Okay, so what we get here is a claim that the statistical analysis performed by the economists is bias. Okay, meaning that this this figure of a rise from 55 to 89,000 is somehow a partisan attempt to justify let's say free market policies. And that would be reasonable if the legitimacy of the statistical analysis was itself in question in the passage. But as we specified earlier, what is at stake, right? The claim is that the rise or growth of the middle class represents a more equal distribution of wealth. Okay, that they are the equivalent. Whereas here, we're trying to call into question the, the legitimacy of the method through which those statistics were acquired. Okay, so C is incorrect because what we're dealing with is the interpretation of those statistics and not their legitimacy. Okay, so C is outside the scope of the passage. D. While the middle 33.33% of Americans have accumulated an increasing percentage of the total wealth since the 1950s, the bottom 25% has become increasingly impoverished. What we get in D is the idea that the middle 33.33% of Americans have accumulated an increasing percentage of the total wealth. Okay, so that accords with the idea that there's been some sort of rise in the income of what would fall within the spectrum of the middle class. However, in the second part, what we get is that the bottom 25% has become increasingly impoverished, right, as the middle class gets stronger. Okay, now if we're trying to weaken the claim that the growth of the middle class is representative or equivalent to a more equal distribution of wealth, then the decline in the wealth of a certain subset of the population while another grows seems to demonstrate the idea that the middle class can indeed strengthen, okay, but wealth can become, through that process, unequally distributed, okay? And that seems to provide a set of conditions that do effectively weaken the claim, right? Specifically considering that it, it equates the middle class, the growth of the middle class, with a more equal distribution of wealth. So D is a good candidate. E. The United States has since the 1950s become the most lucrative for small business opportunities, leading to a larger average income for the middle class. Okay, so what E is accounting for is the actual rise in the median income from 55 to 89,000. Okay, we know this because it's stating that since the 1950s, there's been more small business opportunities, and this has strengthened the middle class. So this statement seems to be addressing some of the information given in the passage, but not what we're specifically looking to weaken, namely the correlation between a stronger middle class and a more equal distribution of wealth. So what we get with E is at best a statement that supports the information given in the passage, but which really is largely irrelevant to the claim that 
we are trying to weaken. So this leaves D as the only possible correct answer choice and the one that most efficiently weakens the passage. This has been a tutorial from gmatquestions.org and I hope you found this segment useful. I encourage you to explore the rest of the features that we have to offer on our website and we thank you for listening.